see on this uh, kind of rainy day. I hope that there's calm, some sunshine here inside the sanctuary. Uh, definitely the message we have is one of hope and, and joy, and so uh, we're glad that you're here. Uh, also, uh, I want to ask you all, while we're gathered together here, first of all, uh, to continue to keep in your prayers uh, Janice Heidegger's family. Of course, the funeral was here yesterday, and so we ask God's blessings on them as they, uh, they seek to continue on. Now, there are some announcements that, uh, that we have. First of all, uh, uh, some of these announcements are in the bulletin. Uh, November 12th and 14th, uh, from 9 until noon, uh, out getting on to probably the more substantive things. In November, of course, is Thanksgiving Blessings Month here at Zion. And today, of course, uh, cans of fruit, and that's indicated there. And next Sunday, uh, box for dry goods, spaghetti, scalloped potatoes, macaroni, and so forth. Uh, thank you very much for sharing. Uh, that's going to make a difference for some folks who uh, don't aren't as blessed as, as we are. Uh, you'll also notice that we're getting ready now. Uh, Danny's working on the bulletin for the Thanksgiving Eve service. Uh, that service is going to be here at Zion on Thanksgiving Eve at 7 o'clock. And uh, so um, we hope that you'll be able to join us. There'll be some special music, and uh, that's the final time for bringing the canned goods, uh, which will be donated for, for St. John's uh, Food Pantry. And of course, uh, we're asking, you're inviting, not asking you, we're inviting you to come uh, following the service because we're going to have some refreshments in the narthex. Uh, in fact, we need six people uh, to bring uh, cookies and breads, if you would be able to do that. And there is a sign-up sheet in the narthex. That's for Thanksgiving Eve. Uh, the service will be at 7 o'clock. Um, while I'm at it, uh, also the announcement, we do need some help uh, after the service to take down the tables and put away the chairs that were set up for the funeral luncheon yesterday. So if uh, you're able to help with that, we would certainly appreciate it after the service. And then finally, well, a reminder of, of poinsettias for Christmas. And all of that is due on the 1st of December, and there is an order form on the back of the bulletin. I think those are all the announcements. I, of course, hope that you come to uh, Bible study on, on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to start this. This week we're going to talk about some, some stuff from the book of Job. So uh, I'd love to have you there. Okay? Uh, I think those are all the announcements that I have. I don't know if anybody else you know, uh, let's prepare our hearts for worship.
watching us electronically today as part of our fellowship as well. We gather together because the Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, our refuge, our delight, our beginning and our end. Amen. Let us come in truth before the one who loves us and has freed us from our sin. Eternal One, robed in majesty and mercy, we, we confess that sin has taken hold of us and, and we are conflict in his power. We are disturbed in spirit and our and hearts, hearts cannot rest. Unbind us and set us free. Lead us again to the waters of rebirth, that we may live just and generous lives for the good of your world and the care of our neighbors, following in the servant way of Jesus. Amen. These words are trustworthy and true. Christ bore our sins once for all on the cross, swallowing up death forever. For his sake, you are forgiven, and God remembers your sin no more. Let your heart be glad again, and rejoice in your salvation. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you show forth your almighty power chiefly by reaching out to us in mercy. Grant us the fullness of your grace. Strengthen our trust in your promises. And bring all the world to share in the treasures that come through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. begins the story of Elijah. God sends a drought on Israel because of the sins of King Ahab. This passage depicts God's saving acts, not only on behalf of Elijah, but also on behalf of those who are associated with the prophet, even a foreigner, the widow of Zarephath. And here's the reading. The word of the Lord came to Elijah, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there. For I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jar. I am now gathering a couple of sticks, so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterwards make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of meal will not be empty, and the jug of oil will not fail until the day of till the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she, as well as he and her household, ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. Thank the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read, uh, read responsibly from Psalm 146. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, in mortals in whom there is no help. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them. Who keeps promises forever. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captive free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. The second reading is taken from the book of Hebrews, the ninth chapter, uh, the ninth chapter, verses 24 through 28. The letter to the Hebrews describes Christ as a high priest who offers himself as a sacrifice for our sin. Christ does not die again and again each year. He died once and is alive with God and reveal, will reveal himself on the last day. Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, 
a mere copy of the true one. But he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself again and again, as the high priest enters the holy place year after year, with blood that is not his own. For then he would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once and for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once, and after that the judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise in preparation for the gospel. Hallelujah. The Lord raises up the poor from the dust to make them inherit the seed of honor. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. After engaging in a series of public arguments with religious leaders in the temple, Jesus contrasts the proud and oppressive ways of those leaders with the sacrificial humility and poverty of the widow. Here's the reading. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor and banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. The poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. And then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed, contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. <coughs> the scriptures yeah. tell us that the common people heard Jesus gladly. Perhaps they knew instinctively that he was one of them. Jesus was turned off by people who puffed themselves up, who were impressed by their own importance, who sought to do things in a grandiose way so that they might win the praise of other people. He despised hypocrites, people who paraded their piety, who spoke in stained glass tones, who prayed long people prayers so that people might be impressed by their impassioned praise. He much preferred people like this poor widow in our gospel lesson today who came to the treasury to give her gift to God. The rich people, as the text tells us, were making a big show of presenting their offerings. They wanted people to be aware of their charity. They used large coins, <coughs> excuse me, so that when the pieces of money fell into the box, the impressive clanging sound could be heard by everybody. This poor widow, however, quietly placed in two tiny coins, the widow's mite, an offering that had a value of about a penny. Probably nobody else 
and the crowd noticed these offerings. Only Jesus. But of course, that's a pretty impressive audience, I would say. And he called together his disciples, and he said to them, that widow put in more money in the treasury than anybody else. <clears throat> they shared out of their abundance. But she gave all that she had. Jesus was always thrilled to see authentic faith, authentic devotion, authentic love for God and one's neighbor. I guess I have to ask, is there any question that this woman loved God? I'm reminded of the story of a young soldier who was overseas. He was writing to his girlfriend. He wanted to send her a telegram because he thought that that would make more of an impression. So he gave the telegraph operator the message to send. It went like this. I love you. I love you. I love you. John. The telegraph operator said, son, for the same amount of money, you can send one more word. So he amended his message and it read like this. I love you. I love you. I love you. Cordially, John. <laughs> Many of us profess our love for God, don't we? I love you, I love you, I love you. But when push comes to shove, our devotion is more like cordially than it is love. The swirl put in all of her money. She put her money where her heart was. She gave it all. And Jesus praised her for that. Now, what I'd like to do with you this morning for just a few minutes is look carefully at the actions of this widow. I believe that there are some other things in there that might have been as significant here. Some elements that went to make up her devotion to God and to win Jesus' praise. I want to suggest, first of all, that her act of devotion was an indication that she had forgiven God. Oh, please don't misunderstand me. Don't, don't accuse me of blasphemy in this. Hear me out. Hear with your heart and not just your head. She was a widow. She had lost her husband. Now I know some of you have experienced that event and you are wise enough to know not only the hurt and the loneliness that that involves, but also the temptation to bitterness and anger. The idea of forgiving God comes from an old story about a Jewish family that had lost some of its members in the Holocaust under Adolf Hitler. Yet they continued to visit the synagogue every Sabbath. And when one of their friends asked them why they were so faithful in their attendance, their response was, we want to show God that we have forgiven him. Remember how Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, in her work on death and dying, told us that there are five steps that grieving people need to go through. Remember that? Denial, bargaining, anger, depression, and then the final one is acceptance. And the fact is, 
Many people become bogged down in one of those stages of grief and never really come out on the other side. Take, for instance, that third one, anger. It's not unusual for a person who has loved someone dearly and that person has died to be angry, to be angry at the one who has died. How could you leave me under this situation? Or maybe to be angry at themselves. Or if I had only done things differently, maybe he would still be around. And it's not unusual to be angry at God. Why didn't you spare him? You see, nobody wants to lose someone they love. There's a, a beautiful little story about a man who was walking down the road when he saw a young boy straddling a limb and a tree. And he noticed that the boy had a leaf in his hand and some string. And he was trying to tie a leaf back on a twig on the tree. And he asked him, what are, what are you doing? And the young boy replied that his sister was very, very ill. She was near death. And the doctor had told his family that before the last leaf falls from the tree in the front yard, she will be gone. This little boy didn't want his sister to die. So he was tying leaves back on the trees as if that would spare his sister's life. None of us, not one of us, can deal well with losing someone we love. When it happens in our lives, it takes time for healing to occur. The story is told about a king who owned a large, big, and beautiful diamond. One day, accidentally, it sustained a large and deep scratch. He called in the finest diamond cutters, but none of them felt that they could repair it. None of them really wanted to try because they were scared out of fear that they would incur the wrath of the king if they failed. Finally, a gifted craftsman came forward and promised to make the king's diamond even more precious. With skill and artistry, he engraved a rosebud on that diamond using the scratch as the stem of the rose. God can do that, friends, with the deep hurts in our lives. He can help us with the healing process. Let me repeat that. God can help us with the healing process and cause it to be a time of maturing and growth. The first thing that this widow may have been saying <coughs> as she dropped her two coins into the temple treasury was, I have come to grips with my grief. I am over my resentment. I am at peace with God. And then in the lesson, as I read it, there is a second thing that the widow may have been saying as she dropped in those two points. It was as I trust 
God. Of course, in those days, there was no social security, no pension, no monthly check she would be receiving now that her husband was gone. Widows back then were quite vulnerable. Unless her husband had been wealthy, or she had children or family members around to take her in, those two coins were all she had. If indeed she had given all she had, she must have done so trusting that God would provide for her daily bread. That is trust. Trust that there was nothing more than enough in the Heavenly Father's storehouse and that He would provide her what she needed. Rule how tells about growing up with his parents in the country. When he was 15 years old, their house caught on fire. They escaped only with the clothes on their backs, and now there were no close neighbors to help. So he and his father walked to a distant village to get supplies. And as they returned, they, they saw something that stayed with Rule How, that 15-year-old boy, all the years of his life. Beside the charred remains of what had been their home, his mother had laid out lunch on a log. She also placed a tin can with wildflowers on the log. It was a symbol of hope in the midst of tragedy. And that, my friends, is the Christian faith, isn't it? She didn't try to cover up the disaster with flowers, saying that it's not real. But in the midst of that gloomy scene, she had placed a symbol of hope. These two coins that the widow placed in the temple treasury were the wilderness flowers, her symbol. Her way of saying, I know God will provide. So then, the widow had forgiven God, and she trusted God. Would that you and I could do the same. And here's the final thing her offering said that day. She was saying, that she believed in the work of God. She believed in the work of God. The work of the temple was of importance to her, and she wanted to support it. Doubtless then it was with pleasure, with pleasure that she dropped in the coins because she knew she was part of something that was bigger than herself. That's why it's so important to recognize and celebrate the gifts that members, often of limited means, share with our congregation here at Zion and with the church at large and with our community. Just look, just look at the articles in the Zion News, okay? Just, just, some are in the bulletin, but in the Zion News. Outlining the number of ways that our Zion members give. And the good that it does. Those, those gifts are, are part of God's work, the God's work, our hands timeline. Calling for the sharing of canned goods and boxed goods in November for the St. John's Food Pantry. The Angel Tree, 
the collecting of diapers and the making of flannel receiving blankets for Wood County and Lucas County Children's Services. Also, the gifts for Grace's Place and Monkey and the ELC disaster relief for hurricane victims. And then all those beautiful quilts, there are 130 of them here, that were made for Lutheran World Relief and more that are already being made now. Think as well of the many ways members of Zion, you folks, share with others and with each other. Not just in times of need. I suspect, I suspect in this lesson, though, there is a reason that the widow spent her few coins on the work of God rather than on herself. Perhaps she had discovered a valuable secret. And I'm guessing uh, that maybe it's something that you've discovered, discovered as well. The secret that you and our whole congregation are aware of. There was a certain woman who lost her husband. And she was having difficulty moving through the stages of grief. For weeks, she went each day to the cemetery to put flowers on the grave. She simply could not let go. No matter what she did, it seemed that her grief would not dissipate. In her despair, she went to her doctor for a checkup. And when she told him about taking the flowers each day to the cemetery, her doctor made a, a very gentle suggestion. He said, in addition, in addition to taking the flowers to the cemetery, let me suggest that you take some to the hospital. I have two patients there who are alone. They have no family in this city. And they would really enjoy some fresh flowers. Why not take some of those fresh flowers to the hospital, ask them how they're doing, give them some encouragement, see if there's anything that, that you, you can do for them. The lady took the doctor's suggestion she took the flowers to the hospital, and soon she was able to work through her grief. Those coins dropped in the temple treasury that day may have been an important part of this woman's recovery from her loss. No wonder Jesus was so pleased to see her make her offering. No wonder. He praised her to his disciples. She had been victorious over her grief. She trusted God for her daily bread. And she was involved in the work of the synagogue helping others. That is also the way God works in our lives. Here at Zion, both to love and to help others in need and to love and to help each other. Indeed, the lady in our text discovered some of the greatest secrets of successful living. God has given us each other as instruments of his love. It is the way God uses to walk with us through life through the times that are good and the times that are bad. Trust God. Be part of the ongoing work of his kingdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Lord Jesus, our portion and our cup. You offered yourself in love for the world, and in this meal, you nourish us with your life. Fill us with your abundance that we may feed the hungry and welcome the stranger, trusting in your name. Amen. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Rooted in God's abundant love for the world, let us pray for our neighbors, the church, and all of creation. Renew your church, O God. Make us servants to one another for the sake of the gospel. Instill a heart for service and a passion for justice in our bishops, deacons, pastors, and lay leaders. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew your creation, O God. Sustain the earth and seas and all that is in them. Kindle in us a reverent awe for all creatures great and small and strengthen us in our care of your creation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew the nations, O God. Heal our nation's veterans from the unseen wounds of war. Tender their trauma and soothe burdened consciences. Guide leaders of the world to end conflicts and pursue peace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew your people, O God. Protect those in our communities who are vulnerable or ill. Accompany persons who are unemployed or underemployed. Children who are in the care of children's services that they might find loving homes. Watch over and uphold them. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew this congregation, O oh God. Give us clarity in our mission and boldness in our witness. Bless our ministries that attend to basic needs of any who lack sufficient resources, that all may live with dignity. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Happy are those whose help was in you. We give thanks for all your faithful ones who praised you as their God all their life long, as we eagerly wait for you. Inspire us by their lives of service. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We offer our prayers to you, gracious God, trusting in your boundless love for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. Our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name 
and join their unending
his precious blood strengthen and preserve you unto eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, you have spread before us a feast of rich food and drink, the body and blood of your Son. Now send us out to labor with you in service to the world you have made and among the people you have made your home. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God blesses us and sends us in mission to the world. The Ancient One enthroned, the Crucified One now risen, the Indwelling One poured out. Bless you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.